Thanks for downloading the latest in our series of episodes of the C-Suite podcast that we're recording in partnership with the European PR agency Taito and their own Without Borders podcast, where we are interviewing leaders of unicorn companies to find out about the key issues, pain points and challenges that startups face and how they can address them with a strategic approach to marketing and communications. My name is Russell Goldsmith and my co-host for this series of interviews is Taito's founder, Brendan Craigie. And today we're thrilled to be joined online from Utah in the US by Claire Wilkes, a CEO of the global payments processing platform Galileo. Uh, welcome to the show, Clay. Um, Thanks I thought, so much. That's, uh, that's great. Great to have you here. Um, we thought we could uh, perhaps start by you giving us a quick introduction to the business, maybe an overview of how you support your customers, but also what the longer term vision is for the company. Certainly. Um, Galileo provides uh, API access to a robust core banking technology, uh, which allows our clients to run and manage enterprise grade banking op op uh, offerings. Uh, and as such, uh, we support uh, 70 out of the top 100 most valuable fintech companies uh, around the globe. Uh, so this is uh, companies such as Chime, Robinhood, TransferWise, Varo, Monzo, Revolut, Remitly. SoFi and many, many, many others. And uh, so what we're doing is we're providing this API access that uh, our clients can call and they in turn uh, can offer services out to their customer. And uh, we're, we're providing the uh, kind of the, the, uh, the back office or, or uh, technology uh, stack behind it all. In terms of uh, uh, the direction of the company, um, the combination with, with SoFi uh, has uh, allowed us to bring the two companies together uh, and bringing together both the uh, digital and uh, banking uh, payments offerings of Galileo uh, and support of our clients, uh, as well as the uh, credit and lending uh, and invest products of SoFi uh, really provides the, the, the strategic direction of the company. And uh, th this, uh, this includes uh, these offering these types of products out to our, our clients. Uh, and uh, into the fintech ecosystem generally, but it also includes um, expansion uh, into additional ge geographic areas. Uh, for example, we've recently expanded into uh, Latin America, into Mexico, and um, we're having tremendous success uh, in in Latin America as we as we move into countries such as Colombia and Brazil and uh, Argentina, and. Um, uh, so that's that's a, a a big part of our our, our current trajectory. Really exciting. Um, yeah, as Russell says, great to have you on the show, Clay. Um, one of the things that I guess that the the big events for you is this year was the acquisition by so uh, so for one point two billion in in April. Um, I wonder whether you could kind of um, talk a little bit about the background to that deal and. Um, also, you know, like whether or not getting that sort of unicorn valuation has changed the perception of your business at all. Um, if you go back to to April, um, the discussions that, that were going on between Galileo and SoFi were occurring in March, and uh, March was really the first month of uh, of the global pandemic, and um, the uh, in the United States and globally, the markets were in meltdown. Uh, so we were um, really in the midst of uh, uh, turmoil financially. Um, I believe that um, we had hit 30% uh, deceleration in the public uh, equities markets, uh, which was uh, faster uh, this year than than had occurred um, just before the Great Depression. Uh, so it was it was really at a, a, a time of uncertainty, uh, and um, so to be able to um, to consummate the uh, transaction was was really a an important uh, milestone and a big event for for us for Galileo. Uh, bringing the two companies together uh, it was really uh, an incredible um, uh, opportunity for uh, for uh, Galileo, but more importantly for our clients uh, and for SoFi. SoFi, of course, has uh, been a leader, uh, fintech leader uh, in lending. And being able to bring together the banking and payments capabilities of Galileo with the lending offerings and be able to offer those out to our, our clients is, is really uh, why we brought the two companies together. And it's it's been uh, um, the, the thesis as well as the go forward strategy for the company. Uh, Clay, you, you touched on COVID just there. I mean, we're recording this interview 
um, you know, just a week before the holiday season, uh, you know, at the end of what's been a pretty challenging year. I mean, how, how has the COVID-19 pandemic, you know, impacted on your business and, and the markets that you serve? Uh, there's been uh, quite a few changes. Uh, the first is, like a lot of other businesses, we've uh, we've had to uh, learn how to work from home. Um, so not only being able to provide the uh, innovation uh, capabilities that Galileo does uh, and and do that remotely, um, but but growth, managing growth. I mean, Galileo has, has grown dramatically, um, and I'll talk a little bit uh, more specifically about the offerings here in just a minute. But so just uh, but but being able to manage the internal component of that growth uh, in terms of bringing on new people, uh, new employees has has been um, uh, uh, interesting and challenging. Um, but 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 we've been able to adapt and, and do it successfully, fortunately. Uh, from an offerings perspective, Galileo, of course, uh, uh, powers, uh, at least in North America, 95% of all digital banking. Uh, and so um, that digital banking uh, has seen during the pandemic has seen uh, unbelievable uh, growth. And uh, it's it's been, you know, a, a really interesting to watch. And interesting, you kind of you talk about that kind of acceleration of digital banking. Um, I guess thinking about the, what the situation we've been in kind of has forced a lot of um, companies to think more inventively and and probably had to deal with you know different kind of constraints that they wouldn't have otherwise had to. Have you you know have you kind of witnessed a lot of innovation within fintech during this year? Um, either that you've been part of or, or or that you've just observed, you know, that have excited you? I wouldn't say necessarily innovation that occurred within the year. There's been a few, uh, but they're not necessarily uh, obvious. Um, I, I would describe what's occurred during the pandemic um, uh, it really as um, preparation and being in the right spot at the right time, both for Galileo and its clients. Um, you know, this uh, been described at... Um, Amazon is, it was built for the pandemic uh, and digital banking was as well. But if you hadn't built Amazon before the pandemic, there would be no way to build it during the pandemic. Uh, and that's true of digital banking also. But what what has happened is that these, uh, these companies that have been focused on digital banking have seen dramatic growth. And, uh, and Galileo, of course, has been uh, powering that and been a big part of it. And, and that's been the, the most exciting thing specific to the pandemic. There has been other innovations, and these are things that will be coming out into the general market within the next, say, 12 to 18 months. Right. Those are, those are going to be very, very exciting. That's really interesting. So rather than COVID kind of being a, a, a primer of some of these innovations, it's kind of um, that those kind of things are maybe are, are still to come, that, you know, the actual you know, the next and the next wave of innovations. Yeah, that's right. And I wouldn't necessarily describe them as, as um, you know, pandemic specific. There, mm. there are things that, um, that are, that we've seen and witnessed that are, that are coming out that are, for example, an evolution in a digital banking offering, for example, um, a credit solution. Um, these are the things that are, that are interesting and exciting. And, and we noticed that you'd kind of recently brought on board a, a new, CTO and I think you know you talked about how um, that person was going to help you take your payment processing platform to the next level. What could you give us kind of like a sneak peek of what what does that mean? Certainly, uh, Jeff Courier is our new CTO, and it's uh, tremendous to have him uh, aboard. Um, Jeff's uh, background: he was actually at SoFi. SoFi was a client of Galileo before the combination. Uh, so for the year, year and a half before uh, they were a, a client utilizing our platform. So he had been familiar with Galileo. Uh, his background <clears throat> before SoFi uh, was, was Twitter, uh, Amazon. We was a, a core part of the, the offering around uh, AWS, as well as a founding member of uh, Microsoft Azure, their, their cloud offering. So he's got deep and extensive cloud experience, uh, which is um, really uh, relevant to what Galileo is uh, under, undertaking right now, which is a, a move from our on-prem uh, environment to, to the cloud, uh, which will be um, you know, widely available first quarter of uh, 2021. So we're just a 
a few months from that. Um, but Jeff has been tremendous. He, he brings a lot of maturity, uh, a lot of uh, deep and rich technical understanding and knowledge and uh, has, uh, has been a, a great addition to the management team. Um, Clay, a key, a key part of the discussions that we're having with our unicorn leaders is on communications and, and culture within the business. Um, it would be great to just understand what your approach has been to, to raising awareness of, of the business and differentiating yourself in, in I, I guess, what must be quite a noisy and, uh, and crowded area. Um, yeah, the, um, the early on as we were kind of going through uh, growth, uh, the, um, the, the need to be able to, to get the, the message out about who uh, Galileo is and what we do, um, I would say was really focused on um, guerrilla tactics. Um, and um, it's, it's not easy. Somebody that's uh, in startup mode and, and trying to you know, make a name for themselves, it's, it's, um, it's a matter of persistence and, um, and, and just sort of staying with it. Um, Galileo uh, you know, grew um, uh, significantly, I would say over the last five to seven years. Um, but before that, um, building the foundation and, and building the capabilities and the technology that would power that. So in other words, uh, watching the market um, kind of grow into what, what, we, um, what we were doing and what we were offering was a big part of this um, sort of growth and, and awareness. And, uh, and that continues today as we um, extend into uh, additional global markets and uh, other capabilities. Um, but raising that awareness is, is not necessarily uh, an easy thing, especially in a bootstrapped environment, which is what uh, Galileo was doing. So we didn't go out and raise a lot of money. Uh, and um, we took a nice, slow, um, deliberate approach to our growth. And, um, and uh, fortunately, it, it paid off. What, what were some of those guerrilla tactics? <laughs> Uh, well, uh, it has to be uh, sort of hand-to-hand -hand combat. And what I mean by that is um, having um, the individuals in the company that are out interacting with the market um, in, in a one-on-one -on -one sort of way. Um, uh, and so it's, it's, um, it's sort of step-by-step. -step. It's, it's uh, bringing in, you know, closing a deal with a client, um, developing a, a relationship with uh, a networking company such as Visa or MasterCard, potentially a bank partner, and each one of these things builds on itself. Um, and so that's that's what I mean by kind of a direct marketing up approach. Sure. And, and what about you know the company culture itself? How have you you know built that over, over the over the long term? For Galileo, uh, it was key for us to um, define uh, the Galileo core values uh, and to um, really uh, focus uh, our, our company and company mission uh, around what we believed in. And, um, and that, that, um, that, that was a big part of it. I think leadership plays a, a key part of it. Certainly the CEO is a, is a key role, of course, um, but the, the leadership uh, more broadly and the leadership team uh, and Galileo had a long tenured team that um, was able to work very effectively together. And, um, and um, it's, uh, it, it's, it's been, a, 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 I think, a big, big part of what, uh, what we've done uh, culturally. Um, the Galileo Foundation is, uh, is another um, kind of key part, but it's just an affirmation of, uh, of our core values. So um, things such as, um, you know, we have uh, one of our core values is focusing on the earth on, on which we live. And uh, we would provide, um, in addition uh, to the credits or, or um, a, a available funds that might be available for purchasing a, an EV and electric vehicle in the United States, Galileo would provide a, a $5,000 um, rebate. So if you went out and bought an EV, um, we would provide $5,000. These are the kinds of things that um, Galileo was doing that were actionable that, that sort of supported our, our company culture and our core values. Well, I'm glad you picked up on that because we we're going to ask a little bit about the um, the Galileo um, Foundation. What was kind of like the inspiration behind that, and kind of how does what sort of things have you been focused on through the foundation, and how does that kind of support your company culture? The the, the inspiration behind it was was really allowing uh, employees, their family, and friends um, 
uh, partners or clients uh, and, and uh, other contacts or associates uh, of the company to really get out into the world and to do something for uh, for somebody else. Um, so we we managed um, uh, the foundation was really focused on on uh, areas of the world such as um, Peru, um, India, Nepal. And uh, there were, were a number of expeditions or, or experiences that we provided um, in support of our company culture. Um, we would provide, in addition to uh, uh, PTO, so it's just standard uh, paid time off for either illness or, or, or vacation, uh, we would provide humanitarian paid time off. So it was a separate bucket. Uh, and we would pay employees to go on these, these expeditions. And so uh, I think, you know, over the, you know, uh, 12 plus years that we were uh, uh, initially focused on the foundation, we, we've done um, many, many um, approaching 100 different uh, expeditions into uh, different countries. And um, it, it's been a tremendous uh, experience, uh, both in terms of um, learning uh, about the world that we live in and, uh, and focusing on something uh, more important than than ourselves or our immediate uh, community. One one thing that we're kind of um, interested in kind of exploring a bit more is, and maybe this is kind of particularly interesting given um, how we've all had to adapt to um, working from home. Just wondered like, what's your kind of philosophy around internal communications and, you know, how, I, I think when you're a, a leader, you kind of have a, a, a role kind of leading and communicating with a wide group of people, but equally you kind of also need to be communicating for with individuals. And I just wondered, how do you, have you, have you managed to navigate that particularly like working from home? How have you kind of met, kept those kind of internal channels of communications flowing? There was certainly a shift uh, in, in moving to an at-home environment for Galileo. Um, the office environment was key to uh, the way we communicated previously and, um, and particularly my, my style um, of, com of communication, which was um, perhaps more sp um, spontaneous. And so, you know, being in a, uh, an at-home virtual environment um, that uh, is, let's say, Zoom-based uh, is, is, is a different style of communication. So. Um, I, I think it's key to continue to have, um, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, which has been a big part of uh, Galileo and the way that um, we have communicated. Um, you know, I encourage that um, not only between my um, the members of the management team, but, uh, you know, all of their employees, all levels of the company, um, daily stand-ups um, and, and um, you know, other uh, regular uh, written communications. These are the ways in which Galileo is, has uh, has communicated internally that's really interesting i think I, I i've a personal observation i've had is i think that although people have adapted very well to kind of working from home i think listening to you kind of some of that um, experience you've had of working very closely with we with people prior to the pandemic means that you're able to kind of have good relationships with people remotely whereas i think if you're kind of having to forge those from a complete blank slate, that's much more, more challenging. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, the other, the other point I would make about working from home, we've seen uh, a number of, um, um, adaptations that I think have been really interesting. Um, you know, for example, there's been a group at Galileo who they don't want to do, uh, necessarily, uh, work communication. So what's missing is that sort of this interaction of the office and, um, one of the groups, um, you know, agreed every morning to to get up and have coffee together. So they weren't talking about uh, work things; uh, they were just, you know, socializing and visiting and having their morning coffee. It's nice. In our uh, interview with um, Mike Massaro of, of Flywire, he was talking about the fact that he, you know, just occasionally he'll he'll post in in Slack saying, "Here's a link to Zoom. I'm I'm here for the next hour. Anyone want to jump on? Do do you do you?" have any of that more informal because because zoom can be quite formal you've got scheduled you know or, or whatever platform you're using very scheduled meetings do, do you have anything that's you know kind of informal like that that's a great suggestion i may start to use that um, right. <laughs> throughout the rest of the the pandemic um i've i've often uh, uh wished for for a mechanism like that because my style is 
uh, to just kind of walk walk down a hall and, and look for the open office and drop in and, and have a um, spontaneous conversation, which you lose completely with Zoom. Yeah. So, um, you know, partnering that with, uh, with with something like Slack is a great idea. Yeah, no, I thought I, th I thought that when I heard it. And what what about in terms? Of, I mean, that's we're talking in, internal comms there. What about your role as an external spokesperson and representative of the business? How do you view that? And and what have you learned along the way? I mean, did that come naturally to you? Well, um, not necessarily. Um, I wouldn't say it came naturally. Um, it's it's as a CEO, it's very important that you're communicating, of course, externally. Uh, it's it's the CEO's role is is to um, be. Um, the chief communicator, I think, in in many regards, and and I have um, I've had to learn that to the extent I have learned it, um, I would say I'm still learning it, um, and so I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't say that at least for me it's it's uh, something that's sort of you know okay now you've I've hit that status I'm I'm still growing and learning in that in that role. Is it is it possible to ask you like what what have you found kind of. Um, kind of most challenging and, and and have you kind of had to kind of like formulate a plan to address any particular areas you were asking earlier about um what what it means uh to, you know to, to to go through the 1.2 billion dollar uh, acquisition and and um one of the things that um was challenging for galileo was was that validation um you know achieving that validation so you know it, to the we, we hadn't taken private equity and to to the extent that you don't do that you you kind of get overlooked by the analyst and and because you're being overlooked by the analyst the press uh and so how do you you know how do you achieve that and how do you communicate effectively uh in a world where it's not really set up to to, to do that especially in a bootstrapped environment so this is one of the big challenges that galileo had um and we were, um, you know, fortunate to be able to kind of finally uh, overcome it. Um, we did, we did um, before, just prior to the SoFi acquisition, um, take a, a round of funding from Excel, which validated the, um, you know, much of what we had been uh, working toward. But many, many of our clients, of course, uh, were were in these various analysts uh, coverage and and Galileo was not. And so that was that was one of the big challenges uh, of uh, effective communications. And what about as well as challenges? Have, have there been any mistakes that you've made that that you're willing to admit to maybe uh, that, that have, you know, yeah, in, what, sort of like affected the way you've you've then done business in the future? Yeah, we we, we absolutely. Um, it's it's hard for a company to to, you know, go, go down a 20 year uh, journey and not make mistakes. So the stakes um, in in terms of product uh, offerings and definition, um, people that we may have hired, uh, products or relationships that we uh, you know either started or put into the marketplace, um, direction um, uh, even um, and and pivots. Uh, these are these are all things that um, if you could see them clearly and um, and execute uh, flawlessly from the beginning, would save time and money. Um, and I don't have a specific one in mind, but uh, they are they are certainly out there. Um, I'm I'm reminded of the incredible success of uh, Apple and their iPhone. Uh, but for anybody that was an Apple fan before uh, the iPhone came about, we'll all remember the Newton. And I would say that was uh, that was a, a flawed product. Um, but without the Newton and that that flaw, I don't know that um, that Apple would have been thinking necessarily and clearly about the way to 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 approach the iPhone. And Galileo has had similar, um, you know, kind of part of our journey. And um, it, along that kind of 20 year journey, has anyone given you any kind of like communications advice that you've really hung on to or really benefited from? One of the things that I think uh, for was a benefit for me, especially over the last, you know, five to seven years, um, and this this is going to sound um, you know silly um, was uh, the amount of reading that that I was doing um, and and while the the advice was not given to me uh, specifically um, one of the one of the things that um, I noted and read about Bill Gates early on was the amount of reading that that he did and he he described that as the single greatest um, factor in his success uh, and. And I think that was true uh, in our journey as well. And and because of that, 
Uh, it affected our culture. Uh, we we actually, I was encouraging uh, our company to read books, read good books that I had read uh, along with me. And we started a book club and and we, we, we would meet weekly. And, uh, you know, ultimately we were, you know, buying um, buying books off the book list for any employee that wanted to request them so these types of things of learning from um, the best minds that are out there and the experiences that they've had are are key to uh, to success that's really interesting so are they were they predominantly business books or not not always mm. um, there there certainly were business books that were but there were books about um, life and and um, uh, life's journey and and success um, in in uh, sort of un, unusual ways, um, the the boys in the boat as an example. It was the first one that comes to mind. I wouldn't describe it as a business book, but it's um, it's it's the the lesson of tenacity, and and that mm -hmm. that is absolutely um, one of the things that um, was was a key part of Galileo's uh, journey. What was so the last really, What was the last book you read? uh let's see um, put you on the spot there <laughs> <laughs> um trying to think what is the last book um the the last book uh, i read was uh, a, a book uh on the um the sinking of a russian submarine and, and raising it uh, off the ocean floor um uh they they raised it with the the russians watching um and they raised it in the middle of a they um they had, carved out a boat that could open up the middle of the boat and then they raised it right in the middle uh right in the middle of this boat and, and stole it out from underneath the russians um so very very intriguing uh, book and again not about business no what, just on on the book um piece clay was is that what do you kind of credit that as doing for your organization in terms of is it about you know, getting people to come together to kind of explore an idea and therefore building a sense of team? Or is it about, you know, gaining kind of a sense of perspective about what's going on in the world? What, what was the kind of like, what do you kind of credit that as doing for your, your business and your culture? It's more formative than that. Um, it's, um, I'm reminded of a book that um, is, is, was talking about the um, advent of um, containers um, and um, and how a simple thing like a container and container shipping, um, as as compared to bulk break shipping, um, changed the world. And um, and so as you if you read about an idea like that and and read about it in depth, um, it it opens your mind to um, a different perspective. Uh, and while containers are not what we do, um, the question is is how does it how does that change of perspective? perspective uh, alter the way we think about our problems that we face. And so Clay, while, while we're on this topic, I mean, what, what are the three books that have influenced you the most? Wow, um, that's a that's a great question. Uh, I would say that um, there, there's been many, many, so it'd be hard to narrow it down to three, but just, you know, three that, that kind of come to mind quickly are um, uh, A Crack in Creation uh, by Jennifer Adwadna. Um, she of course won the Nobel Prize this last year, but um, before that, um, just a week or so after that book came out, I asked my entire family to read that book because I think it might be one of the most impactful things that that humankind has to deal with. Uh, and along that along that lines, um, the uh, uh, the books that um, that I've read and been inspired by uh, that relate specifically to AI, for example, the the Master Algorithm by Pedro Domingos. Uh, is is particularly uh, impactful. We were talking about the Galileo Foundation or, earlier, and um, the Mystery of Capital by Hernando de Soto is is uh, is truly remarkable in terms of better understanding um, the world that we live in, and, and specifically the third world um, and the challenges that they face. Um, back to AI, uh, our final invention um, is is interesting. I think one of the most impactful books that that I read. Um, was a, a book um, by uh, also a Nobel Prize winner, uh, uh, Daniel Kahneman, uh, Thinking Fast and Slow. Um, I, I would say if I had to pick a book, that would be um, potentially, uh, potentially the book. Out of interest, in terms of you know, reading books and hopefully listening to podcasts, um, has, your, you know, has your media diet changed at all through, through the pandemic, through working at home? I don't, I, I don't know 
as a CEO, how much you travelled before and, and whether or not you use that time to catch up on on, on reading or, or, li- or listening to podcasts. But how, how has it, you know, how, how, have that, how has that changed over the last year? Pre-pandemic, um, as a CEO, I was traveling a lot. I was mm. on the road a lot. And um, and I, yes, I would use, um, you know, some of that airplane or travel time as, as time to read and to catch up. Um, and um, it, it's harder to find that now because it feels like uh, we're working constantly. In fact, you kind of lose track of the days. And and so the media diet has has definitely changed um, for me during the pandemic. Um, it's, it's harder to find that time right now to you know, to, to find that kind of, you know, personal, uh, reflection and, and reading time. Um, so you'd say you got to, you, you have to force it a bit. Yeah. It's, no, it's interesting you say about forcing it because there's someone I know is a, is a business coach and she's, she's, a, she can't help going into coaching mode whenever I talk to her actually. But, but she was saying about the fact that because she's lost that commute time, she's put in her diary, like an, an hour walk in the morning and an hour walk in the evening. And that's where she's getting catching up on her listening or reading or, you know, or, or whatever it might be, because it's come out of her, it's come out of her natural day. So she's forced it back in there, which because because otherwise, like you say, you do just you get you're at home, you come down and you're straight into into work mode and, and you're not putting those breaks in, which I think is is quite important. Um, Clay, we've got we've got one final question for you that that we've been asking all all our um unicorn leaders and that's if 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 you were to go back in time and speak to your old self what guidance would you give yourself about communications and also what steps would you encourage yourself to take in order for you and your business to excel in in comms well that's a really good question um my journey, during, at least at Galileo, um, uh, you know, relate, specifically related to communications, um, is um, I think uh, marked by um, personal growth. Um, and um, I think that um, uh, what I would say to my younger self is, is uh, I would I would challenge myself to uh, to get out and uh, and do that um, communications uh, more clearly, more succinctly, more specifically. More directly, um, you know, earlier on, um, I think that's that that's really, really key. Um, and um, being able to articulate uh, the company's strategy is 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 really important, especially as you're, um, you know, starting a, a new and young business. And and so I, it's a key it's a key capability. Fantastic, um, Clay Wilkes. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us and uh, speak with us online today thanks for having me really appreciate it thanks clay there you go brendan uh clay was our second unicorn from north america uh thoughts on what he had to say well i uh, yeah i really enjoyed that i thought um clay kind of shed light on a kind of a different perspective that we've not really explored much i think in any of the other interviews we've done which is that i think a lot of the other Um, conversations we've had have have very much focused on what's going on within an organization and I thought it was very interesting the way that Clay has kind of built a culture around kind of looking outside of Galileo you know so whether that be kind of uh, encouraging everyone and kind of putting a real focus on getting people to kind of read books and and kind of explore different ideas and different different challenges that people have encountered in, in completely different industries, or whether it's about the Galileo Foundation and kind of launching expeditions to a hundred different places in the world. I think that kind of idea of, of getting people to look outside of the organization and then that, you know, inspiring it, the organization internally was a really interesting point and um, certainly something that uh, I'm going to be um, borrowing. <laughs> it must be great to work for the organization and have that foundation as something that you can get involved in as well and he's clearly so passionate about it definitely yeah yeah um well that is actually it for this uh, latest episode in the series with taito um if you want to find out more about galileo then their website is galileo-ft.com uh, we'd love to hear your comments on today's chat 
Uh, you can share those on our Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, or Twitter feeds, and those are all linked from the top of our website at csuitepodcast.com, uh, where you'll also find all our previous shows and supporting show notes, plus links to where you can subscribe for automatic downloads of each episode via the links of Spotify and Apple. And if you've liked what you heard, then please do give us a positive rating and review. Uh, we're, of course, available on all podcast apps. Just search for the C-Suite Podcast and please hit subscribe. You can also subscribe to the Without Borders podcast from our partners at Taito, and all the details for that are on their website. Uh, just head to taitopr.com, uh, click on the podcast link in the top nav bar, and you should find it all there. If you are a unicorn leader yourself and you'd like to be part of this series, please do get in touch via the contact form on the website at c-suitepodcast.com. Plus, of course, anyone can get in touch too with any feedback uh, you may have. And finally, if you want to reach me, you can do that via Twitter using at Russ Goldsmith, or you can find me on LinkedIn. But for now, thanks for listening and goodbye. Thank you.